Hey everyone, happy Thursday. Thank you so much for joining me. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery kits. And I am here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time, and it's a time where we can relax and craft together for about an hour. And I typically work on projects from beginning to end, so you can see the whole entire process and work on it with me here in the evenings. So we are going to continue on the Splendid Sampler 2 Quilt Along, and we have a block 16. It is New Block Thursday today. Every Thursday, a new block is released. Uh, you can go find out more at thesplendidsampler.com and go check out the Facebook group as well. Uh, here it is, Cathedral Windows by Jenny Doan. So this uses a technique or a style of block uh, that I have been wanting to try for ages. It's one of those little th things, those little lists in my head of uh, what I want to try, and this is one of them that's been hanging out on that list for years, just kind of buzzing in the back of my head. So I'm so happy that I finally get the opportunity to try making one of these cathedral window blocks. Uh, I'm pretty uh, excited. We're, we're going to do like a neat little fold technique to it. Uh, I think this would be great if you did a bunch of them for a whole quilt. I'm stoked. So we will get going on that. Thanks again for joining me, guys. Uh, thanks, replay viewers, if you're watching this later after the live. Uh, this will go on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies when we're done here tonight on Facebook. So, all right, flipping you around, let's get going. Oh, this is by far the easiest block and fast, you're saying. Okay, yes, I looked at this. It just seems... Uh, clean and clever and easy. So to start out, what I mean by clean, everything we're cutting is a three and a half inch square. So that's good. <laughs> that's, that's a good place to start. So let's pick some fabric. We need five assorted squares and then four cream prints. That's for these. So I think I'm gonna use my white for this. I considered doing white for all four and then doing colored little um, pieces here and then white in the middle too. But I thought, you know, I like all these different pieces. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick to how it, how it is in the design here. So I need five, uh, we need to pick five fabrics for that. And then I'm gonna just use my white. I have a bunch of scraps here. I'm hoping I can snag uh, four, three and a half squares out of there either. So, all right. Oh yeah, so this one, this one you shouldn't have to make anything larger. There's no applique, there's no embroidery, there's nothing that should shrink it up really. Uh, so don't worry about like adding that extra quarter inch around. You should be good with the three and a half inches tonight. Don, you love this block tonight? That's awesome. I'm, I'm really am excited to work on this. So uh, we're gonna pick from my light cream colors again. I'm gonna leave the bright colors for later. I'm only using those every five blocks. So let's choose from here. Ooh, maybe we can, since we do have larger areas, we could pick maybe some of these more fun, sweet ones that have little motifs because those might actually show up and not get not get cut off. So let's, let's do one of those. I think I have an, another one that's kind of cute like that. Where'd that one go off? Oh, it's right on top here. So how about this one? This one has little letters and little houses and stuff. That'd be cute. Um, oh, we could bring back the flowers again. That's awfully sweet. All right, this is kind of a lot of cream. That's okay. Maybe we keep the outside cream and then the inside block, we do something maybe a little poppier. So, all right, uh, what's another fun, sweet block? All these are pretty decorative. How about, yeah, that's kind of fun still. Let's, we'll put that as a question mark. I want to maybe keep with these creams. We could just do one of our little swirlies. We do have a lot of this fabric. Why don't we do the swirls? Um, okay, uh, and then let's do something fun and bright for the middle. I think, you know, this is kind of our fun bright color is this yellow. Otherwise, there's always this kind of orange. I kind of think this blends together with this a little bit better. I, I'm gonna go with this. I like I like that one. And I like these itty bitty like uh, periwinkle blues that pop around in there too. All right, I think we got a, I think we got our fabrics here. 
Okay, so next up, we need to we need to cut all these. Uh, we need to cut these a three and a half inch square of all these, and then I have some white and some scraps that we need three and a half inch squares out of. And I have a rotary cutter with a brand spanking new blade on there. I'm thinking I can cut all of these all at once. It is a lot of pieces. I mean, it's it's nine pieces. That's kind of, you know, that's kind of pushing it in the land of, um, you know, layers to cut through, but this is a brand new blade. So meh, why don't we give it a test? So let's see. Um, I It's going to be a little bit difficult to rotate these too, but we'll see how we do. I can always break them down and not do that many layers at once. I think we will give it a little press though. Um, let's see. Let's just, we'll start fresh in a fresh new area here. Yeah, you know what? Let's just press these corners. Oh, you need to change your blade. Yeah, if, if you are having trouble with your rotary cutter blade, like if you can only cut through a couple layers of fabric or or if it has like little nicks or it's not it's not cutting all the way through like you cut a strip and then there's one little tiny bit that holds time to do um time to do a new time to get a new blade i did not debbie so i'm hoping this weekend i will have a chance to uh, work on my machine. So I, I dropped my machine on the floor. Uh, this is a little while back. Um, but I dropped my machine on the floor and uh, that's not good. <laughs> so I need to just open it up and do a full cleaning. I mean, it's time for me to do that anyway. Time to oil it. I mean, we've been working on this Splendid Sampler 2 for quite a while now and I'm not sure I've cleaned it since we've started. So it's, it's time for sure. I'm just kind of gathering my fabric here. I don't usually do that, but I know I'm probably gonna have to rotate this a little bit. Um, so it's gonna be easier to rotate if I can have it all on, on the cutting board. I think maybe that's a good idea. All right, just let's press a little corner on here. A little fresh corner. This has got a pretty big fold in it. We're doing all our sweet little pretty fabrics today. Oh man, Don, I don't do anything with the old blades. I actually keep I keep um, the container that the blades come in and I write old with a permanent marker on top of it. And then I just let them sit in there. I have not, or I throw them away in the container, but really I don't think I've thrown away one for years. I just have a whole um, big container full of old blades. Um, I did get at one point a sharpener, but one of those manual sharpeners that you um, just swipe through the sharpener a bunch of times just to, you know, in theory, it'll get the nicks out and sharpen it up. But I didn't see any difference whatsoever with that. So I don't know. I don't, I mean, maybe some of those, um, those machine ones, that spin it around real fast. Maybe those sharpeners work. I just don't know. So, I mean, what some people do is they use them for paper crafting uh, because, you know, with the dull blade, it will still cut through paper really well. But I don't do a lot of paper crafting. Um, and I don't know, I'm partial to my X-Acto cutter, uh, like how I learned in, in school with my X-Acto blade and metal ruler. I'm kind of partial to that um, as far as paper cutting goes. So I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't have a good use for it. Ooh, this one we're, this one we kind of want to fussy cut, don't we? Yeah, we don't necessarily want to completely fussy cut it. Maybe we can get, maybe we can get this elephant in a little bit. Or I don't know. Let's 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 look at this one a little bit. 
Ooh, if we cut it down here, we could get this little kitty. That'd be kind of fun. Let's do that. So we're going to try and snag this kitty. So we will fussy cut this one. You know what? I think I'm going to do this one separately just because we will have some fussy cutting. Oh, that's true. We could do one in the middle. Ah, I think I'm going to do this kitty on the little edge. I think that'll, that'll do. So yeah, I'm going to fussy cut this guy. It still reads as cream, so I want I want that one for one of the edge. Um, man, should we try and get these white ones on here too? Maybe I should just cut these. I'm I'm gonna cut these four and get them out of the way, and then we'll we'll just stack the white ones. The white ones are kind of all over the place, so let's do it that way. So I won't cut through nine layers at once. We'll just cut through four. That's still plenty. Okay, I uh, should be good right here. Uh, three and a half inches. Grab my rotary cutter. Okay, half, one, two, three. Okay. All right, now I'm going to just pick this up and rotate it. Yeah, I got all that bulky fabric. <laughs> I'm, I'm not seeing a lot of your comments, guys. Sorry about that. I'm just, uh, once I get done cutting, then, then I'll be able to uh, comment on them a little bit more. I always get nervous during cutting land. So, all right, here is my three and a half this way. Oh, I'm so excited for this block. It's just gonna be adorable. I've never done it. I've never done a cathedral block, so it'll be interesting how those little edges, those white edges fold up. Ah, I thought I missed a little bit there. Yeah, let's get a scissors in there. Oh. All the threads are going now. I think we'll be okay. All right, done with all that fabric. So that's why I thought I'd cut that. This is a lot of fabric that's in my way. And while we're at it, why don't we fussy cut this um, little kitty? So I, I'm thinking, you know, the kitty will be like right here. So uh, I gotta get it so it's in the bottom part of this triangle. So um, I'm gonna put my 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 ruler here and my ruler has a little diagonal so I want it within that diagonal so here's my three and a half inch point I think if I go right here because here's my my seam allowance if I go right here then I should get that little kitty in there I think let's get it right at the quarter inch bit all right all right so we're fussy cutting this feller We'll just cut all the way to the edge here. Okay, you know what? Let's cut all the way to the edge here too. Toss that. Now let's rotate around and get our other edge, so three and a half. Okay. They're very easy and satisfying, these blocks. I, I'm super stoked. I mean, it looked, everyone was saying on Facebook and everything that it went super fast and easy. And like I said, this has been one of those blocks that has been in the back of my head to try for ages and ages. So I finally get to do one. I'm really happy about that. Okay, I'm gonna set these aside. Uh, let's work our way through this white. So I'm just gonna try and use my scraps, okay, so I need, I need four, uh, three and a half bits out of here. Let's see, how many can we get down here? Can we even fit one in here? Um, yeah, we just can. I have a couple nicks out of here. If I go right in the middle here, we'll be okay. Let's see, three and a half, three and a half. So I can get three out of here. Um, Man, what's the best way to do this? This is such a weird piece. You know what I think I'm gonna do? I'm gonna press it and I'm gonna cut this edge off and then cut a strip and then cross cut it. 
you know, this is a lot easier if I would just stack it all up and cut, but I'm just, I'm trying to use all my weird itty bitty scraps. Then I can start a nice fresh piece of white fabric, which would be cool. Love using up the scraps. So, all right, let's get a different ruler. All my rulers are ugh, at the corner of the table here. So, all right, um, let's, yeah, I got, I got a little nick out of there. Um, oh, and a nick down there. So let's, let's go right here. Okay, I think I should have gotten the, the bigger ruler. We'll flip this around and there we go. This one has at least three and a half inches wide. So we'll do three and a half. We'll do three and a half. I always gotta physically count it with my fingers. Okay. So let's just quickly cross cut this into a bunch of three and a half inch pieces. So first let's just get a real nice edge. I'm aligning the bottom edge on, um, on one of my lines on this ruler. And we'll get a square cut. Okay. Now I can rotate this and cut um, three. I think I'll get three out of this. So three and a half inches. Again, aligning the bottom line somewhere and then making sure that this cut is, is three and a half. Okay, one. I sometimes like using these dots on this OmniGrid ruler. I, I feel like I can get just a hair more accurate, accurate with those tiny dots. Okay, two. I'm really hoping we can finish this guy tonight. A nice quick one, one hour block. That's what I'm going for here. It, it seems like if I walk through the process in my head, it seems like that might be a possibility. Okay, there's three, and I got this guy sitting around. I think I can get um, a three and a half inch square out of him. Yeah, no problem. So let's press this up, and just so it's a little flatter, trim him into a square. Again, I think I'm just gonna cut well, yeah, we'll do it. We'll do it like how we did the other ones. We'll cut the two edges and then do the other. Okay, right like that. Actually, I'm gonna just chop this piece off. Oh man, I got crooked there. Slow down and make sure I get that right. I wasn't quite at the right angle to cut. I tried to do both cuts at that angle and should have adjusted. Getting ahead of myself. That's not good to do when you're cutting. All right, we have our pieces. Okay, so next up, first of all, let's, let's kind of arrange these. I don't remember what order we had them in, but I do remember that I wanted this guy for the middle, so I'm gonna shimmy him to the side for now. We don't we don't need him yet. Okay. So maybe something like that. That's that's kind of cute, right? This one I wanted in the bottom bottom because that has that kitty in the corner. Who's that kitty? If you didn't if you didn't see there, see. Okay, so I think that'll be my order. And uh, now we need to uh, we need to just finger press these, lightly finger press these on the diagonal. So let's do that. And then we need to clip them uh, or pin them to our pieces. 
And I think I'm going to do that with Wonder Clips just because I'm, I'm digging Wonder Clips uh, versus, versus pins. You made a pillow top with the cathedral windows. Oh, but didn't finish the light colored. Oh, turn back pieces. Yeah, that's what I'm excited about that um, turning these back. And you'll see what I mean in a sec here. But first, we need to pin these towards the center like this, which is kind of interesting. So, all right, they all get towards the center. Let's put a clip on here. I think one clip on both sides will do. These clips are strong. There, I think that will hold it in place. So we need to do the other ones now. Just another light finger pressing. So you should have like a folded piece here, right? This is where the fold is. Oh, glue works well for this step. You know what? I think in the tutorial, I'm remembering that now back, way back when, when I first was like, oh, I want to try one of these, which is years ago. I think now that you say that, I think they might have used glue as well. So you could just kind of put a dab of glue um, to keep these in place, but we'll use, we'll use the Wonder Clips. I like me some Wonder Clips. These are actually mini Wonder Clips, uh, but the normal size ones will be just fine as well. Okay, that's two. I'm still trying to keep them in order here. Okay, next up, fold this guy on the diagonal. And I mean, I mean I'm just trying to get close on the diagonal. I don't think it's gonna find like a millimeter off or something, I don't think it'll matter too much. Okay, so still going towards the center. All right. Wonder clip. Oh dang, it's 95 by you, Terry, in, in, uh, in Florida. Oh my goodness. Uh, it was... It was actually 70 degrees here. We had a freeze warning on Friday, this past Friday. And today it was, or I mean yesterday, it was in the 70s. And then today it's in the 40s. So we dropped 30 degrees overnight. And we had a crazy windstorm yesterday We had, for just like a few minutes. Um, all, the, all the leaves from my neighbor's tree blew off. So that's it for the leaves. Because <laughs> usually um, we have... We cut down that tree this year, right? So usually our neighbor's tree goes first, all the leaves. So we're raking up those leaves forever. And then our tree doesn't go till way later. Um, but now we don't have that tree anymore. Uh, so I didn't have to worry about it blowing over in that windstorm yesterday. And I don't have to worry about um, all the leaves everywhere um, later. So I'm pretty stoked about that. But yeah, it's it's chilly here again. I have the fireplace on and oh man, does that just, oh, that's just the most fun thing ever to be able to just turn the fireplace on. It's so cozy. Okay, so here we are. We got our uh, four white pieces folded and Like I said, the fold is, is here. So we kind of have a pocket going on here. Um, next up, we're going to just sew these. We're going to pretend that these are solid pieces and we're going to sew them together like they're just a, a four patch block. So I'm going to sew uh, these two pieces together. Then we'll sew these two pieces together. And um, then, uh, then sew the two edges. And I, I pause there for a sec because now I think I'm realizing why she has pins go diagonally here. Um, we're gonna have to remove these guys to lay right sides together. So you know what? I think I am gonna actually grab uh, my pins here. <laughs> and I'm gonna throw a pin right in the center here. Just a little bit to hold, hold that edge together. You know, Follow the instructions for a reason, I suppose. <laughs> All right. 
This is for backup. Okay. Let's do it. You did two pins. Yeah, it shows two pins in the picture, which is probably a good idea because then, you know, if I have one pin, then it might pivot. But I think we're going to be saved by our wonder clips. So I'm going to, well, un unclip one and hold it there. And now I have the other and now we'll put those edges together. And that's a lot of fabric, but I'm going to just put my clip back, try and match up the, those diagonals as best I can. All right, I think we're good. Let's get a clip in there. All right, that's our first one. Let's, um, let's prep this piece down here right away. So again, remove these clips. Fold it together. Match up those diagonals, like these diagonals right here from our folded white pieces. We'll get a clip back on there. All right, so let's sew those two edges. Uh, we will press them. It looks like we press the seams open according to the instructions and uh, we'll sew the rest of our four patch together. So down to the machine. All right. Um, we'll do the bottom first because it's right here. Take the shoe off. <laughs> I never thought I'd, I would need my shoe off to sew. I've always heard that, like, people taking their shoes off to sew, and I'm like, yeah, I don't really need to do that. But, man, it, it helps. <laughs> helps me. It's just a little uh, more... Uh, I can feel feel the pressure of the pedal a little bit more. Control it a little bit better. So I'm just using my stiletto to kind of hold down the four pieces. Actually, it's, it's six pieces of fabric we're sewing through right now. All right, now I'm going to hold that little corner, that diagonal. Okay, that's our first. Let's go ahead and do this one. You know what, I think it's gonna be easier to start on the non-diagonal side. So I'm gonna actually flip this over and start on the side where all of these pieces uh, come together there. Hopefully that was a good idea. So it's taking a little moment for my, my feed dogs to grab all of that fabric. I think we'll be okay. All right, so just lining up these diagonals at the corner again. That's probably where the glue comes in handy. You're a barefooter. Wonder clips are not so wonderful. Oh, <laughs> uh, I like I like the wonder clips. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes you're right. They they're fat and get in the way. But man, I I like them better than pins in most cases. All right, there's that. So let's get our leader in there again. Okay, let's peek. Let's see what we did here. Okay. Oh, so here's our bottom piece. So that's looking good. Uh, my points match up. Yeah, decent. Oh yeah, they match up really well down there. Um, okay, and We'll just leave those wonder clips in, I think. Uh, and these are glass head pins. So, well, you know what? I don't need to keep those pins in there anymore. They're all held together uh, by by this seam now. As long as I keep these guys on, I don't need those pins. So let's let's just get rid of them. See how we did over here. This is our top piece. That's looking pretty snazzy too. Okay. Uh, so now we got to press this seam open and we got a lot of fabric going on here. That's why we're pressing the seam open. Um, I got to take my other shoe off now. It feels weird with just one shoe off. All right. Uh, let's clear off my, my uh, sewing mat here. It's getting, it's getting all pinned up. Throw them underneath the table here. Out of here, rulers. 
don't think I need you anymore. Hang you up. Okay, clear palette. Um, oh, we don't need we don't need these pins anymore either. All right, so I am gonna try and leave these wonder clips. We probably don't really need them. I can just kind of place this, but let's let's try and do this pressing with them on. So I'm gonna just I, I don't want to hit them though because they're plastic. This might be a bad idea. We'll see. Oh man, hot chocolate! It is that time of year for sure. All right, so. I have the seam open. This is a lot of bulk. But that's, I think, the nature of these cathedral window um, blocks. All right, I think we got that seam as flat as we need it. So that's one. Let's do this guy. Let's go away from those wonder clips. get in between those two diagonal ones. All right, I always like to hit it on the other, on the front side as well. Make sure it's all open and, and pretty there. All right, that was easy enough. So now we have to sew um, the top to the bottom and that's, that's the dealio. Um, so here I could, you know, maybe now is the time to leave that pin in, but you know what, let's just, all I need to do is line up those diagonals. So let's just take these guys off, put right sides together and get the pins back or the wonder clips back on there. So, um, still want this diamond, white diamond in the middle. There we go. Um, let's start out by just, um, putting a pin not a pin, I always say pins, but I mean wonder clips. Let's put a wonder clip, line up those two seams, and we'll put a clip right on top of that. Whoop, almost dropped it. Oh, you just finished your catnap, uh, Robin. Yeah, I am not, I'm not any further than that than, than we were last time, but uh, you know, it's fun to throw in one of these ones that will get done pretty quickly here, like this cathedral window. So, all right, I'm just kind of lining up my diagonals again, lifting up, lifting up the, this fabric to line them up. All right, then lay this down, and now we'll we'll clip it. Right sides are together, per usual. Right sides are the, the pretty fabric of the sides. We're matching those. All right, let's, let's match this diagonal up again. And throw that there. I feel backwards. Let's go this way. That's the point. Line up that diagonal and get the fabric down in there too. Great. Okay, that's that. Let's sew along the line there and uh, we should be well on our way. The next part is the part that I've never, um, that, I'm, that I'm curious about. I, I, the part where we fold back that cathedral window. That's, I'm looking forward to that. So this time I am sewing right at that diagonal. So I'm going to... Um, get my stiletto out here to just help me along. Let me get you guys a little in here a little bit better. So now you can see what I see a little bit, a little bit easier. All right, I, I think I'm actually gonna lift my foot up a little bit too, because this is a lot of bulk. I wanna make sure that my feed dogs get it right away. Yeah, good, and, it, and they did. Let's remove that first guy. I mean, now we're sewing through a whole pile of layers here. And especially through these, this seam allowance, I mean, this is gonna be like, I don't know, 12 layers of fabric or something crazy. I guess maybe not that quite that much, but a lot of layers of fabric, more than usual. So if your machine's a little cranky on this, that's, that's why you're, it's a lot of fabric. Okay, and we're through. All right, 
right, let's peek. All right, <laughs> I'm a little off in the middle, but that's going to be covered up anyway. Um, the edges, the edges look perfect, so that's that's great. Wow, whole pile of bulk. So, all right, let's press this, and then we're going to move on to the fun, exciting part that I haven't done before. That that this is the part that I have been looking forward to um, for ages. You know, this is one of those blocks, like I said, that I've been wanting to do for a long time and just, um, you know, I never had a project to do one. I I have, I think, the directions on saved on some blog post from years ago, how to do a cathedral window block. Um, but yeah, never, never had a project. I always, it, it's fun when this stuff pops up in a project though. Uh, that's, I never, I never practice anything. I always just kind of dive in. So I'm happy that I can dive in uh, right here. This is my practice. The diving in is my practice. Okay. I think I pressed that guy pretty flat. Let's squish him down on this side as well. Okay. There is our center area. It's so thick. We got these little pockets going on here. Kind of interesting so far. I'm digging it. All right, let's uh, let's see what we do next. And maybe we f we'll follow the directions with all the pins this time, maybe. Okay, so um, we want to center the remaining square. Get you guys a little higher here. Center this remaining square. We're, we're putting it right like this, right in the middle. So I'm aligning the points with the seams and the points with the seams on little off over here on, on the edges, and that's what's going to center it. Ooh, it is pretty just like that even. Um, so, okay, let's put the pins where they say to put the pins. And this time, all the pins are going outward. Let's, let's see if there's a reason for that. So I'm putting a pin in this seam here. Wow, that's a lot of layers of fabric. All right, let's do the top and bottom first. Pinning is good here. Okay, good, Gretchen. I am, I'm gonna, since I didn't do it last time and I'm like, oh, you know what? I think I needed those pins. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do them this time. Okay, pin, pin. All right. Ooh, that's a lot of fabric. Have nice sharp pins. I think it's time for me to order some new pins. I, these are just... I like these uh, really thin, long ones with the glass tops. They're just all getting bent because I've had them forever and I've used them forever. Um, so they're all just getting bent. I could use some nice, straight, non-bent pins and throw away all the other ones. And these white ones. I, I don't like these ones at all. I should just toss those all together. All right, one more. This is a plethora of pins. Oh, you spray basted your square. Oh, that's probably a good idea. Oh, you love these glass head print pins. I spray basting is something I've never done before. That might be, you know, with we're going to be doing all that uh, quilt as you go and that free motion quilting with with my um, Splendid Sampler Two quilt. I should get some spray base, and we should try spray basting. Um, at some point, just because I've never tried it before, and I think I think it might be a good project to try. Okay, next up, um, turn the folded edge. This is the this is the part that makes it the cathedral window. Um, all right, turn the folded edge of the cream triangles over the raw edge of the B square. Top stitch along the folded edge and press to make a six and a half inch block. So um, for this, we are. I should maybe take out this pin. We are folding, folding this edge over and it can't really go far because it's attached at these corners. So we can just only go about, yeah, just like this. So I don't know, did you guys, did you guys sew these one at a time and then do it? Or did you just, did you get them all down first? Like, did you, did you fold them all? 
Maybe we'll fold them all and sew them all at once. If that's a bad idea, let me know. So like, what if I put a pin right in here? There, like what if I go like that? Oh, you did one at a time? Like I could just start here and go zoop, 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 like maybe all at once. You sewed yours at one at a time too? Man, should I sew these one at a time? I don't know, let's, let's, uh, oh, because it's easy to hold and turn. You just, oh, you just turn them as you go. Oh, that, that'd be interesting to try. Maybe I'll, I'll, um, I'm going to do them all at once. We're just going to try. <laughs> and, uh, um, yeah, let's, um, just kind of, I'll, I'll do, I'll fold three and then the last one we'll just fold as we go and see, see how it goes. Okay. You glue stick to yours down. Let's try them all. So this one will, will, um, we'll sew these two down with, and I have them with pins. Let's grab the glue stick. So I think this is how I've seen it done with the glue stick. So, um, I think the trick is making sure your block is, is flat because if I go too far, then it lifts up the edges here. So if your edges are, if you, um, hold, hold the, um, side down like this, the edges down like this and then fold it, it can all really only go so far. So let's, let's give this one, we'll try the glue method on this. We'll just, I don't know, go like that. <laughs> we'll see how that, we'll see how that works. Ooh, I think my glue might be drying already. Glue base those puppies down. Um, you can kind of see my my middle square poking out a little bit, but I think once we once it's stitched down, see it'll it'll disappear disappear. It'll get um get sucked up in there. All right, and then this one we won't do at all, and we'll we'll um we'll turn it as we go. So so we're trying a few techniques where. Um, these first two, we're just stitching down um, with the pins. This third one we've glued, and this last one I'm going to just, um, when it comes its turn, I'm going to fold it and then just hold it as I stitch, and we'll see how it goes. But, oh man, I'm pretty freaking excited about this one. It's already looking cute. Um, no, I think, Leslie, I think the Elmer's is perfectly, perfectly fine. I just happen to have this sew line. Uh, this sew line glue pen. The nice thing about this is that it's just that it's just little. Um, you can definitely use Elmer's, uh, like the little kid Elmer's. Make sure it's washable, uh, which if it's for little kids, it most likely is. So uh, um, just yeah, Elmer's should be perfectly fine. I would actually recommend it because you can you can get it wherever and uh, it, it's no big deal. Um, I think we are going to not have my leader here. Let's, let's just get rid of that. I think that'll just mess me up. So one of the suggestions, um, I don't, I don't know who said it, uh, but they mentioned making sure that my middle block doesn't get poofy. And I'm hoping that by all these pins here, I'm hoping that will solve that problem. So one of the things I am making sure, like I said, is, um, not pulling this too far. So I'm, I'm just going to make sure that when I start that I, I'm on a flat surface. So, so this seam and this seam are both on the ground. If they start picking up like this, then, then I folded my guy a little bit too far. So let's fold it and then flatten these edges. And I think we'll have just what we need here. Ugh, so cute. So I'm going right on the edge, you know, just like a man, like a 32nd or something in here. I'm not, I'm just just catching this edge. I suppose you could sew in further. I, I, it probably doesn't matter much. You can hand stitch this on, like a binding too. I've seen that before where you just um, do all your little stitches on the edge so it's kind of invisible. But we're, we're machine stitching this puppy down. Ooh, and the nice thing is that this curve is um, subtle, like, um, oh, it's like just gentle. This curve is gentle enough that I don't have to keep lifting up my 
my presser foot to, to do this curve, I don't think. Ooh, that's great. I'm excited about that. Let's see, what should I do when I get to the corner here, though, if I keep going around? Should I fold this over first? Hmm, I probably only have to go to where it crosses right here. I don't have to go all the way up. So I'm gonna fold this next edge over. I'm gonna get my stiletto to help keep that there for me. And the moment I cross over to that point, I'm gonna start the next, the next bit. All right, a couple more stitches. I think one more. All right, we're in. Let's rotate. Oh my God, it is so cute. Oh my gosh, love it. All right, so here's the next one, which we've also pinned down. Oop, forget, don't wanna forget to put the foot down. Okay, I don't think we need many of these pins anymore. Pins are just gonna stab me. Okay, get this guy out of the way. Foot's down. I'm again I'm I'm pressing down on the edge here to make sure that it's not popping up. Going slow. Alright, let's move that pin. Oh, I could totally see cranking out a whole pile of these. This would be a beautiful quilt. All these um cathedral windows. Oh, let's um, ugh, get rid of this pin. Oh, so this is the one I've glued. So this is kind of pre pre turned, just like how the how the um, pinned one was. But oh man, you know what? I'm not sure I like the gluing as much because now I can't uh, tweak this corner very well. And it looks like I need to get in there a little bit more to cover the edge of of my um my inner square. Let's see if I can stuff it in there. There we go. So I don't know. I don't, I think I'm going to actually pull this, this glue up. I like, I like that I can manipulate it a little bit more. So I'm going to get this corner and then we'll, we'll uh, go back and work that curve a little bit. Ooh, there we go. Actually, let's Tweak that a little bit more. All right, right there. Oh, I'm going through so much fabric. My needle doesn't want to go. All right, I went a little far there, but my needle um, didn't want to go all the way down. So, all right, now I'm gonna turn this. Yeah, I think I think. I think this is easy just just turning as I go. I don't think I really needed the pin there. Because I'm on a flat surface, I can just, um, you know, if I fold too far, I can just kind of lower this back down and then that's where the fold will end up and it'll just end up just right. So yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know if you need, I mean, I guess a pin there was helpful. I'm not sure I like the gluing though. There wasn't enough movement or flexibility there, I don't think. You know what? I'm gonna get rid of these pins too. I would like to be able to flatten this centerpiece as well. And I think those pins are not helping me with that. Oh, should you use a higher needle like a denim one because it is a lot of fabric? Um, I think what I should have really done is just changed my needle. Um, so I've been using this needle for a while. Like I said, I've been meaning to clean up my, my um, machine for a little while and it, that should have included switching the needle a little while ago. I think a nice new sharp needle would have just been fine. I think it just got, um, because of the fabric, it just, it's a, it just got um, pushed a little bit to the side in that last stitch of the last round and that made it want to, um, stop like it didn't go straight through all right I think I'm I think I'm in the next one all right here is our last bit 
Some put a small piece of batting under the centerpiece to add dimension. Ooh, Pat, that sounds fun. Yeah, um, Gianna, I think gluing, like maybe putting a dab of glue on the center block, I think you're right, a dab of glue on the center block to keep it in place. That would be, I think, a little more valuable than putting, um, putting it on this white piece. I think you're right. All right, so we're hand folding this again without the pin, which I kind of like. I do a little bit further than I think I need, and then I'm just pushing down the side, this, this edge here to flatten it out, and then it pops back a little bit. Oop. Hold it down still. Let's see, how should we finish this? You know, I think I might just... Yeah, you know what, I'm, I'm just gonna back tack it when I get to here. I think that'll be fine. We'll just add one little back tack in here. There, that will hold it in place for us. And dang, there we are. You were nervous about this block, Sharla, but you just did it and it worked. Yeah, I think that's that's why I one of the reasons I wanted to do one of these um, uh, cathedral window block window blocks because when I researched it, you know, like I said years ago, it just seemed like magic a little bit, and and I love blocks that seem like magic. So let's I'm just clipping the ends here, and we're like done with this guy. Yeah, so snap, easy peasy. Let's let's just look at this. Um, let's maybe I don't even think we need to press it or anything. Uh, I think maybe we should make sure that it's the six and a half inches. But uh, let's take a look at it. So here we are. It is it is thick. I do have to say, I mean, there's a lot of layers of fabric here, but look how cute. So we have almost, we have this little pocket here still um, because it's only being held down right here, which is kind of adorable. Um, man, and it, it's almost like a floating applique, right? Because it is a lot of fabric. So it is, it does feel like it's floating above these blocks. Oh my God, I think it is just too dang cute and really was easy. Uh, let's uh, find my six and a half inch ruler here. Man, it's time to clean up the sewing area again. And you know, in theory, this should be right at six and a half inches and it, and it is, it looks pretty good. I'm a little, I lost a little bit right here. So that means I sewed uh, my seam just a little bit big there, but I don't think I need to trim. I don't need to do anything. We are just perfect. So awesome. Um, yes, thanks, Jenny Doan. This this was easy peasy, lovely. Uh, just think about this in a quilt. Like if you made a whole pile of blocks like this, you'd have such texture and you'd have all these little pockets. This would be just like a really fun, beautiful um, baby quilt doing a pile of these together. And you know what? That just sounds like so much fun. I mean, and you only had to uh, cut the same number or the same size blocks throughout the whole thing. I mean, just that the cutting was easy made this a pleasant block, right? <laughs> so yeah, easily a one hour block. Um, we're, we're done, we're a few minutes early. I think you could probably, if you got a, if you got like the system down, you could probably do a couple of, of these in an hour. So that's it guys. I'm going to flip you around and um, show you what it looks like in person here. All right, hello again. Oh, look, here's, I think you can see, oh, look, there's, there's my, uh, my fire's going. Oh, best, best time of year when I can turn, turn that on. So, all right, uh, here is the black. There we go. Oh, it is so just sweet. It is, oh, it's, it's, the light is blowing it out, so. But yeah, I love and love it. And here's that little kitty. We got him in. Oh, we even got the elephant in. I didn't I didn't think we'd get him in, but he's in there too. Cute. Love it. So easy. So yeah, if you're worried about this one, go ahead and do it. Way easier than I thought it was gonna be. Um, I thought I was gonna have trouble getting these curves to look all the same, but really they 
they end up being the same just from pressing, um, just from holding it flat against a, a flat surface. So uh, there was nothing, uh, nothing difficult about that either. So yeah, give it a go. Uh, share it in the Penguin and Fish Crafters group. I'd love to see how yours turns out. Um, if you're not part of that group, just uh, um, just click join and answer the questions, and I will uh, I'll get you in. And yeah, I'd love to see it. Uh, I kind of want to make like a hundred of these now. <laughs> Well, I got enough projects right now. We'll wait. <laughs> so, all right. Uh, that's it for tonight, guys. I will get this up on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies. Uh, you can watch the replay there uh, easily. And then you can actually see my see uh, what I see because it's a recording of my, my phone. So you can see all the comments as I see them. Uh, so they're a little bit more in time. Uh, than it probably is on Facebook here. So thanks again, guys. Uh, I will be back here tomorrow. I'm here every evening at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. And uh, tomorrow is Finish It Friday, so it was good that this was a one-day block. Tomorrow I'm going to get the jean quilt out and work on that again. Uh, that'll allow me to clean up my whole area here and uh, start fresh with something. So thanks again. Uh, I will see you guys tomorrow. Have a great evening. Good night.